Do you know what I find absolutely amazing? Apart from that cup of tea. Whoa, that's good. Is that we have this big, beautiful old tree in our backyard with a heap of bird life, but no birdhouse. Guess what we're building? It's good news, Jeff. You're about to get your very first house. Jeff? G'day folks, my name's Uncle Knackers and you're watching DIY for Knuckleheads. Let's do this. Now for the birdhouse, I want to build it out of this old sheet of ply that a mate of mine was throwing out a couple of days ago and said that I could have it. He told me that it's marine grade and suitable for outdoor use. I'm not quite sure about how marine gradey it actually is. and We'll see how it fares up after a year or two. It's a bit worse for wear, but I think with a bit of spit and polish, it will come up an absolute treat. Alrighty, let's get this show on the road. Aha! I've been looking for this can from WD-40 for ages. I thought I'd lost it. Sheer beauty. Now the first thing we need to do is to cut the floor and the roof for the birdhouse. And those dimensions are 380 millimeters, which is a whisker under 15 inches, by 300 millimeters, which is a whisker over 11 and 3 quarter inches. And all I'm using is that old sheet of ply that I picked up a couple of days ago. And to cut that ply, all I'm using is my trusty old circular saw and a straight edge to get that cut nice and straight. I could use my table saw, but I'm nursing a couple of broken ribs at the moment and manhandling this piece of ply is proving to be a bit tricky. Anyway, let's not get too fancy. All you need is a circular saw. Let's do this. Now my first measurement is going to be 380 millimeters, which is a whisker under 15 inches. So mark that on your ply. And now I'm going to show you how easy it is to get a beautiful straight cut with your circular saw. Just grab yourself a straight edge that can be either a level or a piece of timber, anything straight really. And then grab your saw, make sure it's not plugged in and then measure from the outside of the fence to your blade. Whatever that distance is, in my case it's 41 millimeters. Add that onto that 380 which you've just marked. Now I've already done that, so 41 millimeters which is there. And I've done that on the other side as well. I've already pre-marked it. Next thing you do is grab your straight edge, which can be your level, and clamp it off on that last mark and just put on that ply. So clamp it off, both ends. And you're ready to go. Now that cut finished up absolutely perfect. And you can see why clamping down a straight edge just there and then running the fence of your saw along that straight edge is such a great idea. Try it, you'll never go back. Yeah, I know I said I wasn't going to use a table saw, but the piece is smaller now. I can handle that, just one cut. No, two cuts, I'll do two cuts. Maybe three, but it'll be two, at least two. Now up to this point, we have the floor and 
the roof cut out. The last two stages are the two sides made from ply and the other two sides ah, out of this old hardwood. Let's get stuck into it. Just to make sure we're all on the same page, here's a floor plan of how the birdhouse is going to look. This is the front, this is the back, and these are the two sides. These walls here, bang and bang, they're to be made out of that old hardwood. These walls here, bang and bang, they're to be made out of plywood. The distance from the edge of our floor to the face of our hardwood on both sides is 70 millimeters. Alrighty, that's pretty simple. Let's cut these walls and get stuck into it. Let's do it. Okay, now that we've cut the ply walls to the same width as that piece of hardwood, the next thing we need to do is just to simply grab that template, which we marked out earlier, grab the measurements off that, and cut the walls to length. Too easy. Let's do it. Now this is basically how the birdhouse is going to look once it's all been put together. And I have made a few adjustments from that original template. This piece now runs all the way through to the edge and the back section also runs all the way through to that edge. And before I glue and nail the whole thing together, I just want to give it a really good sand. Yeah, that's coming up really nice. I like it. Everything has now been cut, sanded, and is ready to be glued and nailed together. It's important to remember that when doing a project that's going to be outside, that you use fixings that are suitable for exterior use which often means that they're galvanized. And I'm using these galvanized 38 millimeter or inch and a half brads that go into my nail gun. Alrighty, let's assemble this beast. It's also important to remember to put the nails in the gun. <laughs> Just a little mistake there. Right, ready for action. Now before we glue and nail the hardwood walls in, we need to drill the bird hole first. And I'm using a 65 millimeter hole saw for my bird hole. Now I know for a fact that different size bird holes will attract different species of bird. And I've been told that around here, the 65 millimeter bird hole should do the trick. Let's give it a go anyway. Now this hole saw is about as sharp as a bread and butter knife. So I hope it's got enough cutting power to go through this old bit of hardwood. Let's give it a crack. What did I tell you? Oh well, let's keep going. Now 
Take two, I had to go and borrow one from my neighbour. It's a bit sharper, I hope. All right. Job's done. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now just before we assemble these hardwood walls, I want to attach some mesh. I've got some plastic mesh here. You could use wire mesh or just some wire. And attach it to the inside of the box, just underneath the hole. And the reason for it is that it provides some grip for the little fellas to climb up that wall, out the hole, just in case they want to stretch their legs. Oh. Wow, when they say hardwood, they aren't kidding. There you go. Just have to tap those over. Job's done. Now we don't want our feathery friends getting wet feet, so it's a good idea to drill some drainage holes in the bottom. With those drainage holes now drilled, it's nice and clean inside. We can finally finish the job off by nailing in our hardwood walls with my trusty old nail gun. Now I just want to fill these nail holes in with an exterior filler. I'm just using this stuff here, polyfiller. Fill up those nail holes, give it a sand, and then a paint job. We're almost there. While I wait for that filler to dry, I'm going to install the mounting bracket. What I have is a bit of flat metal and an angle bracket which I've had left over from a previous project. They're both galvanized and perfect for exterior use. But I'm pretty sure if you went to a pet shop, you could probably buy a designated birdhouse mounting kit. Anyway, we'll just put our plate in place, put our bracket on top, just like that, and screw it in place. There we go. That is as solid as a rock. Beautiful. And I just want to drill a few holes in the face here. So I can have three little perches. Beautiful. With the sanding all done, and I have to say, it's come up an absolute treat. The next thing we need to do is to apply the paint. And what I intend to do there is to paint the top and the side with this bright gloss orange, and then the rest of the ply with a clear satin varnish. Let's do it. Whenever you're painting, it's always a really good idea to do an undercoat first. It primes and seals the timber and makes the next coat of paint stick. Just do it. All right, here's the moment of truth. That gloss orange. Ooh. It's probably not as orangey as I'd like. I want to see how it goes after a couple of coats. Now it's an oil-based enamel and it's exterior, so it's suitable for exterior projects. All right, let's get this on. All right, that's 
that first coat done, we'll give that 24 hours to dry and come back with the second and final coat. All right, the orange is now all done and I finished up doing three coats and not two because two just wasn't quite enough. And for the finishing touch, I'm just applying two coats of this marine grade clear satin varnish. We're almost done. And just for a bit of fun, I stenciled a vacancy sign onto a piece of wood and nailed that back to the birdhouse. Because you know, it's nice to know that after a long flight, you can come home, fold up your wings and put your head down for the night. <sighs> Beautiful. So that's it folks, the varnish is now dry and the birdhouse is now completed. What do you reckon? I think it looks absolutely amazing and I just hope that the little birdies love it as much as I do. Great tip, knackers! I wonder who our first guest is going to be? Sorry mate, but it's not going to be you. <laughs> Poor Jeff, he had such high hopes. Well, I hope you enjoyed and found that birdhouse video useful. And as per usual, a big thumbs up is always greatly appreciated. And if this is your first time to my channel, please click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And don't go just yet, there'll be a few photos going backwards and forwards of the finished product. And if you'd like to be the coolest kid on the block, check out my DIY for Knuckleheads merchandise store. The link will be up there and in the description box down below. Check it out, you'll be glad you did. Alrighty, this birdhouse needs to go in the tree. So till next time, I'm out of here. Cheers. Here birdies.